right then uh, reliant kitten project part seven um uh, as i'm recording this i'm just recording the intro after i've done all the videos it's uh bank holiday monday today uh, i think is it fifth of may today or six anyway um so uh, we're coming to the end of this project now um this is the final few bits and pieces it's mainly tidying up a lot of the um interior um just basically tying up a lot of loose ends it does kind of conclude with uh, a road trip to milton Keynes for the anglian agm and um anyway um and there's one or two little issues <laughs> that had to be sorted so anyway we'll we'll carry on with video now right i'm turning my attention to this door this back door now but if you saw in an earlier video there were a, there's a but it does close but there's a big gap here um it's just not right the the, the way to do it this, this hinge here has rusted under here uh, the top one doesn't seem too bad but you can see somebody's put that pin in because the pin must have had a lot of play in it or snapped or whatever the proper way to do this would be to totally replace that door but it's going to cost a bit of money and it's going to uh, be quite a bit of work so I've decided I'm just going to bodge up or fix up what I've got basically if I put my finger in there you can see this can lift up a little bit it only lifts up by a couple of mil but that's all it needs to do and it'll help and you can see a witness mark on here you can see a witness mark there where it's there you can see that oh, if I move my finger you can see that witness mark at the bottom here right where obviously you can see that it's been too low you can adjust this but these screws are all rusted um, I've done my best with it they do move um, so what I'm going to do is this you can see the issue here one of the issues all this wants repairing there's like a dovetail joint that goes on there and that slides into another part here but this were all rusted um, beyond repair basically um, and I'll show you what I'm going to do this is the bottom part of the bit that were rusted beyond repair I've, I've, I've cut it in half because all it needs to do is have this part ride along that and just lift the door up a touch that's obviously off another car that's all it has to do it just has to lift it up a touch but I've got to repair that door and I'm going to have to make this kind of adjustable I can't just screw these two things in together screwing them into place solidly because if it's not right first time there's no adjustment so it's going to be a bit fiddly but something to get on with Right, the only way to fix that um, is to get behind it. I've got three layers of fiberglass tissue in there, and then obviously the hole and the, behind those holes as well, all those holes. And then I, when it's dry, I'll fill all the, that top of that with um, the ice upon blue tin. Obviously, the only way to get behind that was to cut a hole in the door, because otherwise it's impossible. And I'll have to go over that hole. I'll just have to put a patch over that hole when it's finished. Um, so there we go. Let that go off. Um, and then fill it up. Okay, this is repaired now. Um, you can see it's a little bit of a, a bodge up of kind of using what I had left. You can see the big holes here. I haven't filled them in. Um, so that's been screwed in from the side that's been screwed in I had to fit new screws to get that in that's all been fixed now and then when I uh, when I close the door now that's a nice gap that's a nice gap but there is no rubber in there the door still moves in and out a little bit I need a new rubber the existing rubber it's far too thick when I fix that. When I fit that, I can't even shut the door. So I'm going to get a new rubber and I will sort a seal out. You've got to have a seal because if you don't, exhaust fumes can be drawn up into there. 
into your car and then eventually it doesn't smell nice. So, another thing I'm looking at, I don't know if you can see in there, the adjusters. See the headlamp adjuster? It's like a plastic screw on that thread. That thread is quite rusted. I'm thinking about getting some new balls for these. I don't know how well this is going to come out because as I'm looking at this now, I can't really see what I'm looking at in there. I don't know if you can on, on, on the thing. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking about getting these, but um, it's not a major priority at the moment. You can get brand new ones of these. I've seen them on the internet for about 30 odd quid a pair. Uh, how do you get a socket or a spanner on that plastic screw? How do you do it? Because the bottom end of that screw is kind of submerged a bit in that little gap there. Anyway, I'll look at that later. Right, I've, uh, I've decided to uh, have a go at just tidying up the outside of the car a bit more. It's a bit cold, it, it's really wet and miserable outside, there's not a right lot I can be getting on with. Um, so what I've done is, these are the little fibreglass end caps for the front and back bumpers. These are really rare, they, 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 These go. you can't get these, these are like hen's teeth now. Um, they, obviously, any little corner knock, they would just break, they'd fall off. And... Um, a lot of kittens just have these missing. So all I've done is I just give them a quick clean up. I didn't even rub them down much. A quick clean up and a quick spray over just to tidy them up. The grill I've cleaned up a little bit with some emery. And then that's the original badge that were fitted. And I bought that off, a, off somebody on Facebook. It was only 12 quid delivered. And what I've actually done on that, it only had two pins. One were missing. Um, you can fix it with two. Um, but what I actually did was, I fixed it on with a couple of nuts. Can you see that there? And I very carefully ran a die down there. You've got to be careful because they could snap off quite easy if you put too much force on them. So I managed to get a thread on, put little nuts on, use some thread lock. That's, that'll be fine. Um, that'll be okay now. So, so yeah, that just looks a lot cleaner. Um, didn't take long to do this. Is from the center console for the heater controls um, and the other added thing with this is the levers do not point anywhere near what these are so that it, it does at the top the lever goes right to the top off and hot and off that's fine but for 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 that one there um, screen it's a it's a bit above that and for these two down at the bottom it, it's like right up here so I'm going to give this a clean and I'm going to try to print out some little transfers on some clear paper. I've done it before for pinball machines, some of them buttons that are on there. Like these things there. You don't buy them like that. I've actually printed them out on some clear plastic. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same on this. Uh, and just give it a little bit of lacquer. Just to lift it up because now that I've done all that dashboard... This stands out, and I've also rubbed down that gear lever, getting ready just to give that a quick coat of paint that's inside the car. Uh, I didn't bother taking it out. So that's where we are with these little bits. The bumpers are off, I'll give them a bit of a clean, just a rub down, a bit of a clean back to black. Uh, they'll be going back on shortly. Okay. Okay, um, I've got the front grill put back on now, and this fiberglass surround. Um, what I did, I just I just gave it a quick, I just filled in some of the imperfections, I didn't go to town on it, I gave it a quick prime and I've given it a quick coat in some of that Wilco paint that I had left um, when I did the interior bits. It just screws in, in these four places, there's two on each side, and what they do is, there's this, there's about an 8 mil hole behind there, then you put these little, you put these little things in, and then the screws go into these, so the screws don't actually go into the fiberglass body itself. So that's that done. These end caps, this end cap here, you saw earlier when I had them in the kitchen and I painted them up, I wasn't happy with this. This leading edge here was completely missing and you could see inside there, you could see the screw head that holds this in. I wasn't happy with it so I just used a bit of fibreglass, that fibreglass filler stuff and shaped it. It, it took a little bit of time but I got it nice. So all them four are on now. It just lifts the car. A bit, but like I say, I'm not going to go really to town on it because obviously the main paint job is rubbish. Um, going back to these headlamps, there is like a hole. As I'm filming this, I'm struggling to see anything because of, of the sun. I'm hoping it comes out a bit better. 
Um, there is a hole in there, that's where you adjust that stud. There's a stud, that the plastic nut that we saw earlier on these, that's just like a little knocking nut. It's the stud that you turn to adjust. Um, you do a vertical and a horizontal, there's two, there's another hole there on each one. But, I, but what it is, they're seized, and ideally I need to change those balls in there. Um, I've not got round to doing it. But I think, I think overall it looks a lot better. Another thing I've done is, I've... Uh, I've got the hub caps back on the car now, so they help they help make it look quite a bit better. The problem with these hub caps, let's get down here. The problem with these hub caps is they're quite tight. Uh, they were fitted to Classic Mini. It's a whole one single piece hub cap, is this? That's not a separate beauty ring. The problem is this outer edge here, this outer bit, is quite thin. And when you come to try and take it off, if you try and take it off with a screwdriver, it all bends and mangles. You can see how it's, you can see where it's been dented over years. Um, you can find these dead easy at Auto Jumbles. So I'm just going to try and see if I can find some nicer ones. But I won't find any mint ones because of the nature of them. I've got a, I've got a, um, a crowbar that just fits in this gap nicely, that levers it off with the minimum of flex of this outer thing. And that's how I do it now. So, yeah, it's getting there. Um, from the factory, these these side things, you, uh, you could see the screws, they were exposed. I've just put them behind them little, those things that you can get where you cover the screw cap head. Just makes it look a bit neater. Um, so we're getting there, a few more things to do. Okay, just turn attention to the uh, the bumpers and just explain. The bumpers on the Reliant Kitten are nothing more than just a piece of rubber trim. They're not old style bumpers in the true sense of the word, right? So basically, you've got the end caps here. They're held on by a single screw. You remove that screw, that just comes straight off, and then you're left with the screw all there. That is, uh, the, the, the end cap just covers that, so you don't see that. And then what you've got is you've got, this slot, there's this rubber slot here, goes all the way down here. And what it is on the car, there is a metal strip with like a, a hook shaped piece at the top. And that hooks into there. And the way you're supposed to put this on is you insert it at the edge here. And then you slide this along the full length of the rubber. You slide it along the thing. Now when these were new in the factory... I mean, the, the, this piece of rubber is 47 year old, knocking on 50 year old, right? And it'll have shrunk. And there's, I, I tried to slide it along the metal strip. I used a, quite a bit of grease, got grease in here. And I only got it along about, what, eight inch to a foot or so. There were absolutely no way that I was sliding that along that strip. It was just not happening. You can see when in the factory when they put it on, they also had a bit of glue. Just a bit of glue on the lower edge. It's not really needed. So all I'm going to do is um, I've removed the strips from the car, I've drilled the rivets out, I've filled the little holes up that were left. You'll see that up back bumper. The front one's already on. Um, and I'm just going to screw it in. I'm just going to, you know, put three neatly spaced screws and use uh, screw head caps so it looks neat. So, so yeah, that's, that's how that's going to be done. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no way I could put it on in the conventional manner. Uh, when you put, when you peel it off, when you take it off, you just break this seal if this seal is still holding, and it just peel, it just lifts off the thing. You can just peel it off, but putting it back on, you have to slide it along the full thing. It's just not happening. So um, we'll see how that looks shortly. Okay, uh, got the brand new seal on now, um, all the way around. So this rear door now is now finished. Um, well I say it's finished, there is one more thing to do, I'll explain that in a minute. So this door now closes, no problem. There is still a gap here with the seal on and I'm just going to have to live with that. It's not as bad as it was before, um, you know, it, it were a lot worse than that before. The thing is you buy a brand new seal and you can test it and see that it's sealing all in different parts. When you get a sample you can test it but then when you actually put the full seal on round the door it's a different story. It is better than it was, and it's okay now. The last thing, the last thing that I've got to do with this door now is try to repair this heated rear window circuit. It is working, the circuit works. 
but only four of you can't see them now you won't be able to see these but there are four only four of these out of 11 of these little strips along here that are working um, but the circuit does work because when I drove it last week I could see the four that were working and the others weren't so I need to try uh, tr to try to fix them now I could just buy a new window I could just buy a different window and, and fit that <coughs> and renew this seal at the same time but who's to say that there'd be more than four working chances are there would be but I, I won't get a perfect one so I'll uh, explain what I'm going to do with that now Right, um, the back door, as we've seen, is done. Um, it's just about done. The only job left to do is to try to fix the broken lines on the re heated rear window. Now, I bought some of this stuff. I bought, I bought this ages ago. It's basically like a metallic fluid. It's got loads of flakes in it. Um, you have to give it a really good shake-up. And this is like a... this. I bought this like a, meant to be a goldish colour to try to match what is already in there. Now whether this works or not I don't know but I've just done a test so give it a shake up. The nozzle on the end is really thin you could apply it with a brush if you wanted and this you've got to wet, you've got to let it dry and there is a dried line. I can put, put my finger on there look I can feel it but it's, it's completely dry and then if I use my multimeter put it on continuity and then I'm trying to do this with one hand uh, Can hear that. That's a good. That's a good. It is working well, but you've got to let it dry. I haven't quite got the things pressed down there, but it is working. So I just need to put that where the lines are broken on the back window, and let's see if I can get that back window fixed. The only other thing to do would be to replace that window, but I don't know if I do that. I don't know if that's going to be any better. I mean, this stuff cost me a tenner. So if I can fix it for a tenner, there are three or four of the lines working, but most of them don't. So I'll have a, I'll have a go at that. Okay, I'm turning my attention to the rear lights now. Um, as you remember, if you've watched the early videos, I managed to get a pair of brand new ones. The kind of clusters trailer lamps. So we'll have a look at these. Um, this is a new one. Obviously, this is an old one. You can see bits of paint all over it. Um, the connections on these... We're just, we're just getting poor. I will continue having to clean them with emery. Um, so these are brand new. They come with a little seal in here, which is loose. And trying to put the lens on without this flicking out somewhere along the line. So what I've done is, I've, it's difficult. So what I've done is I've glued it into position. So it can't come out at all now. And on here, let's have a look if we can get in closely. You see these terminals, female spade terminals that are on there. Right, you can see that one a bit more clearly, look. I can't get them off. They're on there from the factory and I can't... You must be able to get them off, but they're so tight on there that I'm worried about breaking or bending something. And, and they've got a little... They have a little hole in there in where to put the wire. You can see it clear, a bit clear on that bottom one. So what I've done is, on the original one, I've cut the wires from the loom as close as I can to get them to get the to get as much length as possible, and I'm just gonna fit push the wires through this hole here. Might make that a bit bigger. Drill that a bit bigger. Get the wires through there. Attach this to the car, and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna crimp the bare end the the the, the, the bare ends of the wires into their respective holes. Um, so that's that's where I am with this. The, these are just cheap lights, you know. Um, Lu, I, I, people used to slag Lucas off. Call it they called it the um, what were it the Prince of Darkness or something they called it because they said the headlamps were rubbish. But I tell you what, the tail lamps and stuff like that were a lot better than these. Um, but this is what we're fitted to car. Um, and like I say, these are Durite made now, so. Um, the fittings for fitting the for fitting the lamp, there's four you see these four holes here, there's four holes arranged in a rectangular. These are these are the original fittings. I've managed to rescue all but one of them. 
they're like little roll plug type things um, you push that through the hole you put a screw through and it splays out at the back um, so you know they're okay I have managed to get I've managed to find in one of my bits and bobs drawers these little roll plugs um, you're probably better off with the yellow ones if you have to replace them because the yellow ones I think are the smallest um, they go in a 5 mil hole so I'll use these what I can and um, just uh, just get these lights on now and then back on the road then so the rear lights have been removed I've painted inside here because when I painted it before I just went around the outside didn't quite get in properly so they've all been painted the wires the wires are in there so they just want trimming and fitting to those brand new lights that I've got fitted that I've bought and that's one new light fitting installed these little screws through those things there what a, what a rubbish idea um, you have to put a lot of pressure on them because you get so far and the little roll plug type thing it's not a roll plug but the original fitting just starts to turn so you have to put pressure a lot of pressure on the screwdriver to press it against the plastic to get the screw to turn in without it all spinning um, and I'm not really impressed with how you just have to feed the wiring and crimp it but they are meant to be trailer lamps and uh, you know just not as good as the old-fashioned lights you used to get on 60s and 70s cars but I have checked that they work so I'll get a lens on now and get the other side done right right then okay so I've cleaned these up a bit um, obviously they look a bit better but I have got new rubbers for these so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these out now give the glass a really good clean this can be repainted um, yeah I'll get on with that then well these are really easy to get out basically just run a Stanley knife along there you can see where I've cut the Stanley knife and this just pulls off this pulls off I've got to go down here now dump the bottom bit and that window just pushes out and then these things well obviously this is the other side these things come out but they are they are held in by a couple of rivets and some sealant so uh, they just want cleaning up all the aperture wants cleaning up let's have a look at the other side so all this aperture wants cleaning up uh, touch it with a bit of paint before um, paint these things and then put them back in and then me and Math are going to put the glass back in on Tuesday that's the plan anyway right then windows out both sides now um, I've given it all a good clean up I've rubbed down with emery paper down here because all this wants painting around here these little black uh, vent things were held in by three rivets there's one there there's one goes there and there's one up here as well so what I'm gonna have to do now is I'm gonna fill these in with a little bit of fiberglass um, repair stuff just fill them in and I'll re-drill them and I'll use little screws instead to hold them in so there's top bottom and one at back to do um, and paint all this it was a little bit awkward actually because the old rubber on one side I think it was this side actually the old rubber had been a bit stubborn to get out but it's done now um, just wants cleaning up now and a lick of paint around the edges right uh, these are done now um, like I say all I did was give them a quick clean up uh, rubbed a lot, I had to rub a lot of the, the old sealant in there get all that out and I've just uh, primed and painted them they've come out quite nice uh, so these these now go are going to go on the car I repaired the held as I mentioned before there's one rivet in there there's one rivet at the bottom and there's one in there's one here um, on this bit here this leading edge here that goes about halfway up that wants a little bit of solvent uh, solvent a little bit of sealant putting on it or a little bit of sealant in the corner where that pushes into and the same on here because the glass sits on this little lip here there's just a little bit of sealant on there because that's where the sealant was now on this one you can see that this little bit of the lip has broken off so what I'm going to have to do with that is I'm going to fit that into the car and then I'm going to repair that in situ by putting a little piece of carefully cut 
fiberglass matting and just put that in there so that it's level with this just just to fill that little lip up so that when the glass goes in with a little touch of sealant on it's all flat down here it's the best way i can do that because remember you won't see obviously you won't see any of that because the the seal comes right up here for the glass so yeah they're, they're, they're not broken that little edge there only goes up halfway it's the same on both of them so right i'll get that done and then it's just a case of me and math getting the windows in all right Right, um, the glass is here now, and I've fitted these new rubbers. I got these rubbers from James at CHG. Um, it's basically something off a roll, is this? And it's been glued in that corner really strongly, actually. Um, but they have fitted nicely. I did notice that as I was fitting them, they tend to do this as you go around some of these radiuses. But if you, if you get hold of the rubber and do this, and just, like, push it in properly... They do sit nicely and they get this get this squared in first and then I found that it were easier to leave the biggest radius as the last section to pull the rubber over because it is tight, very tight. And um, that one there or that one there is suitable. I won't leave this as the last one. Um, I've cleaned up all the glass using this scalpel as clean as I can, cleaned all the edges around um, and I intend to use this with soapy water, put it in the seal at the back and pull it round. But that is going to be a two-man job. And uh, me and Math plan to do that um, at some point this week. So I've got to clean the frame up now, get the frame cleaned up and painted a little bit better with my quality fence paint. <laughs> and, then, and then put these in. Right. Right, another thing I've attempted to do here is I'm trying to stop the leak. I've got a leak in the footwell each side. Um, I'm suspecting it's coming from this corner here um, because when we have any heavy rain, the water tends to set, sit in there. Um, it, it, somebody commented on the last video that it could also come in through the spindle, so I've put some round here. Now, it looks a little bit of a mess, if I'm honest. And I've done my best. I've I cleaned it all down. And obviously, you get all this crap dropping off this tree. And some of that's dropped into it. Um, at the end of the day, that looks crap, if I'm honest with you. But if it fixes the leak, then I'll live with it. I could... The, the way to do this is to replace this seal entirely. And fit a new one, if indeed it is coming in through here. Um, but... It's possible that I could replace this seal and make it worse. I just want to see if I can find where it's leaking. So I've done it there. And I've also done it, same thing here. I've also lifted these wipers a bit. I took them off at spindles and lifted them because I noticed last week when I was driving that this will whack in at the bottom. It was making a noise, it was annoying me. So I've just lifted it up a touch. Same with that one. Um, so we'll see if, we'll see if this works. See if it managed to dry because I don't want that carpet getting wet all the time. Right then, I've taken the windscreen out. Um, I'm still getting I'm getting leaks into both footwells, so it's time to renew this seal. Um, the window comes out really easy. There were a joining piece around about here, um, and basically, well, the joining piece is always at the side up there where where the split in the rubber is, but down here is where the locking strip went and you just prise one one piece out with uh, a screwdriver and pull it round you pull the locking piece out and then the entire window just pushes out at a corner gently and just work it just works out so this is a this is a cross section of the original rubber which is 40 odd years old and what they call they call this stuff Clayton Wright that's I don't know if it's a brand name or whatever but they call it Clayton Wright rubber and your locking strip goes in there look but there's also on this on this the original rubber there's that flap piece now you can't get this anymore i've not found this anywhere at all everywhere that does this clayton wright rubber just does like like that section without the flap and the flap helped go here so that as you as as the rubber ran round there it helped cover this rounded edge here down the sides it's not so bad down sides but I've managed to find a supplier that does a rubber identical to this but without the flap and I'm just going to have to see how it goes. 
um, it is possible before you put the locking strip in to lift that edge and get some sealant in there while it's still loose so I'll probably look into doing that but I've cleaned all this edge up I've rubbed it all down this edge giving it a little bit of a lick of paint because um, because obviously with the flap with that flap on there it came a lot further and I painted just up to that edge there so I had to get I had to redo the whole edge there I mean, it's obviously it's rough and ready because it's crap paint <laughs> right but uh, that's how I've done it and um, we'll see how that looks tomorrow because it should be coming tomorrow what I'm having to do with this phone as well I'm zooming in a little bit because I've noticed if I do the zoom out it loses quality I've noticed the resolution drops it seems to anyway right we'll see how that goes tomorrow okay the, the room seal has arrived this morning um, and I've now put that in Obviously, you know I cleaned that edge and painted it. You've got to get really tight into these corners, make sure that that's all nice and tight. The actual join, I've put the join where it was on the car originally, which is midway up that side. When you cut this rubber, I used, I got this special tool that comes for it. Um, it was only about eight quid on top of order, and that is very sharp. So, um, because I remember last time I went and did it on tricycle, I didn't, use, I didn't use that. I used like a Stanley knife, and it was just difficult to get the, the cut straight. So that's that done. Now to get the window in. Right then, the seal is in. The window is in, but I've got to put the locking strip in yet. I've just got it started. I'm going to do, do the join at the bottom here for the locking strip, and this is the tool. I had this tool from when I put it in for the tricycle. Now, you've got a choice of either chrome or black locking strip. I've just gone for black. I think it was chrome originally, but I've gone for black because the chrome one is a little bit harder to put in. It's a little bit of a stiffer material. Um, so I've gone for black. I'm not bothered about colour. Um, I've just got to work my way around here, put soapy water in all round in this gap. And uh, let's get that in and see if that cures the leaks in the foot wells. Right, that's it. It's in. Got all the way around now, got that locking strip in. Uh, the whole thing really didn't take, well, it took me just over an hour from start to finish, doing it steady and carefully. I mean, I'm not an expert in doing this, but it's a simple enough job. You've just got to make sure you get the correct um, rubber because there's the bit in the middle, the webbing, and you've got to get the two grooves right. Both of these were five millimeter, the window five millimeter, the frame five millimeter. And the bit in the middle, the bit of solid rubber that's in between, that was six or six and a half according to the website. I got this from Seals Direct and it came including postage, which will next day delivery, plus this tool, right, with the lucky strip of the rubber, it all came to about 46 quid, which is not bad I suppose. But the question is, is it watertight? That is the thing. Um, it certainly feels very tight, but time will tell. Like I say, you just don't get that flap on the original rubber that came up here. But as you saw, the original rubber were all cracked. It were, it, it were all cracked and uh, it just looked a dog. It just looks a lot better now. But obviously, what it looks like is not the point. It's got to do its job. So we'll find out in due course. Okay, um, final little bits then in the kitten. So... As we've seen, I'm, all this trim bit is now done around the windows. Um, brand new rubbers in the back, new rubbers in the front. Um, I'm happy to report that currently there are no leaks into the car now. This leak, this footwell did have a leak in here, even after, even after I'd fitted the windscreen rubber. And I tried sealing in that corner a little bit more. Took the rubber out just a quarter way around, the, the, the locking strip, a quarter way around. And managed to get some seal under there. It was still leaking into this footwell. But I've been driving the car around a little bit with a towel down there. And I don't know what's happened. Whether the window has settled down or something. But it stopped. We've had a lot of rain this week. Um, this footwell, it is dry. It looks like it's not, but it is. Right. That's not been getting any leaks. That's not. The worst leaks originally were down in these rear footwells and they're totally dry now that I've put new rubbers on the doors. So looking at the dashboard now, I clean that gear lever up. You can see I've painted the gear lever and I've cleaned it up. I just painted, put some paint, cleaned it up and put some paint in that 
in them recesses to make that look a bit newer. All that's been done, I've found little knobs, look. Little knobs on the end there, pound from an auto jumble then. Um, and they are computer printed and stuck on there, those decals as close to the original as I could get. But they actually line up now. When I move these now, they line up to where they are. It's just a, a little detail. But um, there we go. Um, I've got me tuned on a little USB thing now. So on the outside, I managed to get a new set of four wheel trims. They're not mint, but I'd say they're eight and a half out of ten and they are better than what I had so um, they're on and as a finishing tiny little touch I got these decals off eBay um, on brown cars it were a gold on other colours that kitten were black it's just a little finishing touch um, obviously as, as I keep saying the paint is rubbish and this is why I have rubbish paint look at the state of all this look at the state of all this bird crap all over car because I have to park underneath this tree so I can't have a nice car on this drive I just can't so there we go if I stand back a bit I could put it on that uh, lower resolution thing but then it won't come out as nice so we're pretty much done now this kitten is now come to its end of its project it's come to the end of the project I did find a pair of new ones of these mirrors brand new but the buyer wanted collect only and he were in Portsmouth uh, you can get them they're about £80 a pair anyway and I'm not paying that um, I could give them a lick of paint I suppose no harm in that but how far do you go these are brand new you can get these brand new they're Ilman Imp but how far do you go getting all new chrome bits and pieces um, it's like putting lipstick on a pig in it with this car let's be honest um, so long as it's all right underneath so that's all the brakes rebuilt, all the suspension rebuilt, the engine's been tuned up and had a few bits done to it. All the interior's been completely revamped. And uh, I'm going to Milton Keynes in this next week for the Anglia Owners Club AGM. So we'll know for sure then, won't we, after that run. But I've been on runs in this car before. It's done the Lakes Tour last year, the Anglia Owners Club Lakes Tour. And... Um, it's also been to Southport, as you know, at New Year. So I'm, I've got, I'm confident in this, totally. But that's going to be the final thing. And the, this, this project is now to a close. We move on to something new. All right, then. Uh, here we are on Sunday. I don't know. can't remember the date now. Um, down at Milton Keynes Museum. So um, not right lot to see here, but it, it's all right. The weather could be better. It's, it's been really cold this weekend. So as we can see, the kitten has made it. Uh, came down on Saturday morning on the straight down the M1 non stop, no problems um, for the Ford Anglia Owners Club AGM. So I'll just walk down here, have a quick walk, wander down here. I'm not going to spend too much time going into detail with these videos uh, with these cars. Um, there is a couple of estates that arrived because obviously my next project is an estate. Just got hold of a new, egg, new old stock exhaust. Off, uh, off a chap. That's lovely. Is that? I really love that maroon one. Really beautiful. But I'm not investing in a nice paint job on that. So there is an issue with the kitten, which I'll explain in the little bit at the end of this video. Um, but generally speaking, the engine and gearbox perfectly fine. No loss of water. No loss of oil at all. Good oil pressure and temperature all the way. So it's almost passed with flying colours. But I'll explain a little bit of the issue in a minute yeah so um, I mentioned in that last clip there that there was uh, an issue um, a small issue with the car basically as I was driving down the motorway doing around about 60 mile an hour the water a shimmy a very slight shimmy it won't it won't bad the sort of thing you get when your wheels are out of balance um, the sort of thing that you think well I'll put up with that you know for so long and try and get it sorted but it can be a bit of trial and error can't it because it can be balancing it can be your tires it can be your wheels um but anyway so i guess down to i got got there no problem as you saw coming home a <laughs> slightly different story um car driving as as it had done 
and then I got to Castle Donington Services and I just got past there and the steering became much worse. I slowed down for this 50 mile an hour roadwork section and the steering were bad. It got bad and I was having to hold it off centre just to keep the car straight. I was keeping up with traffic like 45 mile an hour or whatever, but it was bad. And I, I thought, I can't have this. So I pulled straight into it. Up, loads of cones at left-hand lanes. Pulled into that lot. And um, I was looking underneath the car. I'm in a safe spot there. Because there were two lanes cordoned off. So I got right into the third one. Uh, the the th th furthest left one. So we're all right. But one of these traffic rumble cars turned up. You know, those black and yellow things. They're not police. But they must have seen me on CCTV. So they turned up. And they were really helpful and basically they explained to me they, they organized a free recovery for me to get off at motorway but that only takes you to the nearest services so um the guy came and we did between us find what were wrong with it before he got the car on on the back of his truck so luckily i'd taken all my full toolkit with me um like you should do when you're doing when you're driving these these the old cars around so I got to Castle Donington Services and this I'll, next bit of clip now, next clip will explain exactly what went on. Yeah, right. So while the um, recovery guy were getting his truck ready to take the car, lowering, he was just lowering his um, tail bed thing. Um, I, I was stood at the car through the open window and uh, this is how I spotted it pretty quickly. With the steering wheel, with this spoke at 12 o'clock, I were able to move the wheel round here to say the 5 to position. And the front, that front, that offside front wheel moved. But then as I pulled this further round to the like 9 o'clock position, that wheel did not move. That wheel did not move again until I got down here. Which obviously is seriously wrong, right? So I shut, and that's why I were having to hold this. Like I were having to hold it like this to keep the car going straight through those roadworks. So I showed it to the guy, and he was really helpful. And he got underneath, and he noticed that there was some play. He noticed there was some play behind the front um, joint, behind one of the front joints. And this is what I found when I got to Castle Donington Services. So basically, I've removed all the shoes, as you can see, because I'm at home now, so I'm going to sort this out. What I had to do in the services car park, take these shoes off, because you can't get access to these bolts here. There's three bolts in a triangle. There's one at the bottom that hold this uh, steering arm assembly, the, the, the stub axle, to the back plate. The bottom one is just back plate to stub axle, but these two hold the steering arm at the back and they had be both become loose and the steering arm were wobbling about. Now, when I fixed it, I noticed that certainly one spring washer had no spring left in it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna replace, I'm, I use the same bolts, but I'm gonna fit brand new spring washers and I'm gonna use Loctite just as a belt and braces. And I'm gonna do both sides and I'm gonna do all three just to be on the safe side. Because obviously I can't be having that happening again. So the steering shimmy, the, the steering shimmy was still there when I'd fixed it, but I, it were only a minor shimmy, and I think it's something to do with just maybe slightly out of balance or whatever. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap back wheels to front wheels um, after I've done this, and then at some point get it out onto the motorway, 60 mile an hour again, and see if it's any better or even any worse. Um, but certainly this has got to be sorted out. So. Right then, so that's it. that explained that there. So yesterday, as you've seen in that last clip, I've, uh, I had car up drive. I fixed all. I fixed all that now. Took it out for a road test yesterday, and um, the shimmy, the little shimmy, is still there, but it's extremely slight now that I've moved the wheels from back to front, and it's doing it at fifty mile an hour now. But it's really slight. Like I'm really having to concentrate to to feel it. It is, it is, there is something there at 50, but if I push on to 60, it disappears. So obviously something's improved there. And, um, obviously, you know, I've fixed all those, fi fitted all those new washers and locked those bolts. 
So really, um, the only other issue I did spot with the car on the drive yesterday is that I'd lost, uh, side lights weren't working. Um, I'd, I noticed I'd left the side light switch on and I thought, oh no, the car's not going to start because I'll have a flat battery, but it started straight away. I noticed that the lights weren't working with the side light switch on. If I put the headlights on, they came on, but I wasn't getting any rear lights. And basically what it was, and I, I was kind of lucky really, the contacts within the switch were all gummed up and dirty. So on side lights, I wasn't getting any, there was no circuit. But when you pushed it on the lights, it did. So I'd left it on side lights, not knowing that they weren't working. And so the battery didn't go flat. <laughs> so anyway, I managed to fix that. That just wanted a good clean up, did the switch and a bit of electric contact cleaner. This is what you get with these old cars. You know, we're talking like 50 year old parts. Um, so we're going to bring this to a close, this project now. And just to finish it off, I mean, obviously I've not restored this car. It's not a restoration. It's more of a, I've just tidied it up, haven't I? I've just tidied it up, but it's taken a lot more, a um, lot more time, um, especially rebuilding all that front suspension than what I thought. And somebody said to me, somebody did ask me, what do you think about Reliant Kit and then? Is it a good start, a classic for somebody? And I'd say, well, the answer to that is yes or no. It's a bit sitting on the fence. Um, yes. The good things about Reliant Kittens are they are dirt cheap. They are dirt cheap to buy and they do come up for sale every so often. Um, you, you're getting quite a bit of car for your money really and obviously as you've seen my car's parked on the drive. It doesn't matter come rain or shine what happens. It's not going to rust. Um, obviously you've got to check the chassis because that can rust and what have you. But, um, but yeah, they, they are dirt cheap really. All the same running gear, engine, gearbox, etc. as a Reliant Robin, but the engine is much, much easier to get to. Everything is so easy to work on. Rear wheel drive, so, so simple. And, um, you know, even I had that steering thing. I had my toolkit with me. If you know what you're doing, I had it sorted out in half an hour. Um, so th that's what's going for them. The bad things against them... Um, you do have to make sure that the front suspension is right because all those parts in that front suspension are unique to the kit and they're not used on another car. So if you do buy one of these, you have to make sure that that they are in decent condition um, because the parts availability is not like for Classic Mini or Volkswagen or whatever, Volkswagen Beetle. You, you're just not going to be able to get the parts um, unless you join the kit and register, which is a must really. Um, and then these parts are available, but it's whether they've got any in stock. Um, so yeah, there is good points and bad points about owning a kitten. Um, people don't really know what it is. People see the car, they know it's an old car and I see people pointing, but a lot of people come up to me and they don't know, they just don't know what's that. Not seen one of them before. You get these comments sometimes, whereas a three wheeler, everybody knows straight away. It's, you know, they'll call it a Reliant Robin, even if it's not, even if it's a Rialto or a Regal. So, yeah, well, I'm going to wrap this up now, bring this to a close. Um, obviously, I've got to keep up with things. There might be an updated video coming up. In fact, I've got an update video coming up for Regal for 2024. So, um, I'm going to move on to this Anglia now. I've, I've made a tentative start on it. So, bring this to a close now. That's Kitten Project done. And uh, I'm just going to enjoy it now. Right, okay, right, see you later.